This is Twit. We go to beautiful Ypsilanti, Michigan, where the fire is roaring <laughs> and the sun is shining and Sam Abul Samid is sweating. Hello, Sam. Sam. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, we can't hear you. How about if I press, oh, if we I can unpress the cough button? <laughs> good to see you. No guys. coughing. Hello. Hey, good Sam. To see you too. What, I always like to ask Sam this. What are you driving this week? Uh, this week I have the uh, Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness Edition. Ooh. Ooh. Now, Mike is a Subaru guy. I do like There's Subarus. a certain type of person. My kid's a Subaru, Subi guy. They call them Subis, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. You like it? But it's fine. You know, it is what it is. I mean, it, it's it's not my particular cup of tea, but for what it is, yeah. what it's in, intended for, the, the intended audience, it's perfectly good. good. And, you know, oh. it's you know, it's it can you know do a little bit of very light off roading. And by the way, if you're watching the video, the car behind me is not a not super a super. I can tell by the <laughs> no. interior that that is a Tesla. I'm thinking. No? I think it's no. BMW. No. What is it? It is. Yeah, I can tell that by is, the BMW that is the, on the uh, tires. The BMW. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is the BMW Vision Noia Class uh, X uh, concept. Ooh. Sorry, that's so, a name. But this is yeah. the concept. I remember they so. showed this recently, and I was very impressed, and I thought, oh, I yeah. want that, but it, you can't get it yet. No, it's coming out the second half of 2025. Yeah. Um, it's going to look very much like this concept. So Noia Class is literally German for new class. So this is their new uh, EV-only platform. That is launching next year. I have to say, um, I could not be happier with their current EV only i5. It is a wonderful car. Really, really happy with it. I'm so, glad glad you like it. Yeah. Um, the The difference though is the car that you have, the i5, the five the five series platform, is actually a flexible platform. Right. So BMW makes versions of that same platform that are all electric, like yours. They have versions that are plug in hybrids. And versions with uh, internal combustion engines. You know, I know this because there's a place in the back where the exhaust pipes would go. But actually, yeah. it was one of the reasons I wanted this car because it doesn't look like an EV. So you're just driving down the road and people don't know that you're, you know, stealthily all electric. Mm -hmm. you, you, it just looks like a normal sedan, which I like. Yeah. This yeah, does not. So <laughs> <laughs> the Nui class does not. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's not that it necessarily looks particularly like an EV, but this is the new design language that BMW is okay. going for, okay. a cleaner design. Um, you know, the interior, uh, you know, across in the the the, uh, the photo, the image in the background, on the screen in the background, you can see if you're, again, if you're Look watching the video. Look how clean that is in the interior. You know, it's, yeah. you know, just a big central screen. And then there is a, a panoramic heads-up display that stretches, spans across the entire top of the dashboard. And then on the center screen, you can drag widgets on there to get the information that you want displayed up there. So it's there all the time. You know, the irony uh, of this is the EU NCAP said that you have to have physical controls <laughs> to yes. be to be safe. And I kind of agree with them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Tesla's gone way too far in the other direction where everything's on the screen. Is this, look. What do you <laughs> think? Is this have physical controls? Uh, it doesn't look like it, it. It it has some, but I you know, I think the production version of this, again, this is the concept, um, you know, the production version is coming about uh, 18 months from now, uh, and it will probably have more physical controls on there in order to accommodate those those new rules. Yeah. In fact, uh, Elon had to do a software recall on Tesla's because the flasher icon was too small or not obvious. Yeah. I think yeah, there's requirements for readability of right. those of certain uh, warning lamps. And I things think like that. flashers should be physical and and very obvious and easy to hit because yep. that because you need them, I, especially for I BMW totally agree. drivers. Yeah. They need to know where they hey. are. <laughs> and you know the the interesting thing you know is a a trend. A lot of automakers that had gone more and more into touch controls are now at even before this change of rules in Europe are starting to shift back towards physical controls. Interesting. Um, Hyundai and Kia uh, are uh, just at the New York Auto Show last month announced uh, some refreshes of some of their models that go back to more physical controls. Um, Volkswagen is doing the same thing. And I think BMW will have to do a bit more of that on the production version of this car. So this is just the concept, but the overall look is is what, what it's going to be. What was interesting, though, uh, in addition to seeing this vehicle, was we also got to visit uh, the BMW Design Works studio in Santa Monica uh, while we're out there. And DesignWorks is a subsidiary of, of BMW 
that does uh, a lot of advanced design work for BMW brands for BMW, Rolls Royce, Mini. Uh, but they also do work for a variety of other clients. Like they've done aircraft interior design. They have designed tractors for John Deere. Uh, they do all kinds of interesting projects. And the one of the, the theme of what we talked about when we visited Design Works was how they're using AI, generative AI tools. And, um, uh, you know, we talk a lot, you know, with AI about uh, hallucinations. Um, and it was interesting, a couple of weeks ago, I was out in California for NVIDIA GTC. And uh, during uh, the time I was there, uh, it was a, they, as part of GTC, NVIDIA puts on a program for analysts. Uh, and we had a, 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 a a Q and a session with Jensen Wong. And he talked about how when humans learn things, we go back and we reflect on those lessons and make connections to other things that we know and what could happen with those certain actions. And he described it as, in fact, we simulate scenarios and we generate uh, in a similar way to generative AI, combining elements that we've learned into something new. And then he goes on to say, so you're now simulating these multi-step, multi-multi-step scenarios and you're doing it completely in your head and then you do that enough times. And then what happens? It becomes reality to you, said Juan. <laughs> <laughs> and it becomes your reality. Oh, no. Now, that reality, if you go on too long, if you're like in a padded room and you just sit there and you uh -huh. do this, and when you come back out, you're insane. And, uh, and now wonderful. why is that? Because you were never grounded in truth. So this is, this is what causes the hallucinations is that lack of connection. And I think this is one of the problems we're going to run into going forward with, with Gen AI um, if we start – feeding in the previously generated stuff into as training material into the models. It, this is what causes, starts to cause hallucinations and stuff. The flip side of that though, is for most applications, we don't want hallucinations, but there are some where we do. And this is where the designers actually uh, like the hallucinations, because if you've ever been into a, a design studio, one of the things you'll see inevitably in there is you'll see mood boards. You know, when they start a, start on a new design project, they will, the designers will take some time and they'll go through books and magazines and websites and all kinds of things. And then I'll find images and words, passages that they think, you know, are, give, give them the theme, the, the right mood for the product that they're about to try and design. And they put all this stuff up on a mood board. Well, what the designers at Design, design Works are doing and I suspect at most other design studios are doing something similar is they're starting to generate their mood boards using gen AI tools like mid journey and stable diffusion and using that to create. And, you know, now on behind me, if you're, again, if you're watching the video, you can see some of the images they create, have the, the gen AI create these wild images that they're now using that for their mood boards for inspiration. So every time they, you know, they're getting something completely different, you know, from what designers in another studio might be getting or the designer next to them might be getting. This is to um, me always the best use of AI is human AI mm -hmm. collaboration. Mm -hmm. There was an yeah. article uh, today in TechCrunch about a company called Neural Concept, which does AI aerodynamics. And in fact, Formula One, four of the Formula One teams are using it oh. because aerodynamics are so important. And I imagine this is going to be the same thing for EVs. Aerodynamics are so important. But what they're doing is they're not having the AI design the aerodynamics. They're having an AI work with designers to suggest, I just like this that you're yeah. talking about, to suggest ideas. The designer says, oh, let's try that and let's see. It's, and it, it's, a, it's a good collaboration. Yeah, so they're using this to to get inspiration for colors and materials yeah. and textures uh, to use, you know, as, as well as, you know, for inspiration for shapes, you know, the shapes of the vehicles. And so there's all kinds of crazy things. And one of the things that the designer doing this presentation talked about, he said, we actually wanted to, we want the, the gen AI to hallucinate, hallucinate yeah, more. Sure. Yes. Yeah. You know, we, we, we want something original and wild and crazy that gives us inspiration when we sit down to do our design work. Hmm. That's exactly what Neural Concepts is doing. He started it yeah. as a French uh, student in a, the Ecole Polytechnique for bicycles. He designed mm -hmm. aerodynamic fairings so that for land speed records on oh, bicycles. Yeah. And he's, and they're now doing it uh, for automobiles. Same idea. I think this is, this is where I think AI is going to be very transformative, to be honest. Yeah, it's not, it's not a replacement. It's, no. It's just 
It's another a tool in the toolbox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then as they go along, you know, they're taking, um, you know, the images, the still images that are generated from a stable diffusion, diffusion or mid journey. And they are in fact using both of those and other tools. Interesting. Um, wow. And then feeding that, into other tools to to animate it to create animations based on this these still images you know to so generate something completely new you know new animations and then also experimenting with using it for marketing materials so once you've designed the vehicle then take some of the inspirational images and combine that back in as collages and in different ways to uh to create new new things you know, with this, with the stuff that they've designed and the the AI generated uh, materials. I was thinking that today, actually, thinking, well, my car is, is BMW's design palette is fairly dull. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, that's probably part of their sales pitch, right? Uh, except for some of the high end, you know, cars. But uh, but the sedans, like the five series, very boring looking. And the reason I chose it is because it just looks like a you know, yeah. doesn't attract attention exactly. But I imagine the next generation. Of so electric. you don't want to flaunt your wealth then is what you're saying. <laughs> it wasn't that expensive. Uh, but I, you know, I hated the early Priuses, which looked like teardrops or something because they mm -hmm. were so obviously weird looking uh, and it seemed like a marketing thing. But now I'm coming well, that, back. That was, that was part of the appeal though for right. a lot of Prius drivers is sure. that uh, virtue signaling. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm it, driving a say, a better car. The Ionic I is my favorite. It's beautiful. That's vehicle. a beautiful vehicle, yeah. actually, and I selling think it very looks well. So cool. So, but yeah. I, then now I'm starting to think maybe, you know, that it would be cool to have a car that didn't look like any other car. Mm -hmm. That 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 was coming. Remember um, Buckminster Fuller's, um, mm -hmm. the Dimaxian this, uh, car, Dimaxian car, yeah. which was actually t uh, literally a teardrop shaped, mm -hmm. and Bucky was a was one of those guys who thinks outside the box. And uh, it didn't sell well because it was perhaps a little ahead of its. Well, time. yeah, it was never, it was never, it was never manufactured. It was, I think there was, there may have been one or two prototypes. Yeah, what, what it ended up happening with the Dymaxion cars, there was a, a fatal crash, and people decided, oh, this thing is not uh, safe. Yeah. I don't know if it was unsafe, but it was aerodynamic, which is super cool. Uh, here's a here's a video of of the Dy Dymaxion car. It kind of <laughs> looks like the VW bus that John's going to be getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, kind was, of, yeah. I think it was a trike. Yeah, it was a three wheeler. That yeah, it, it was a three wheeler. Yeah, yeah. I'd ride in that. That looks fun. I think it looks cool. Yeah. But anyway, so good. Maybe we're going to get some uh, interesting designs. Uh, I like this cloud bubble car design. Are we ever going <laughs> That's a little We're going to float around in bubbles <laughs> yeah. to our yeah. next destination. Yeah. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> Darn. But, but DesignWorks is working with a, an EV tall company. That is one of their clients. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, the electric multi quad copters. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Those should look like clouds. They should look yeah. exactly like cirrus clouds. Yeah. Puffing so they around. don't. So that way it doesn't uh, sort Destroy of disrupt the, the landscape. The yeah. 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 Very cool, Sam. Sam Abul Samad is our car guy, principal researcher at Guidehouse Insights. Uh, he also is, does a wonderful podcast called Wheel Bearings at wheelbearings.media with uh, Nicole and Robbie, and uh, I love that show. Listen to it. If you like cars, it's a great show to listen to. And I get all my uh, auto-buying inspirations for the last few generations, I think, from <laughs> you, Sam. So you've been very good. I see now, by the way, I see uh, Mach-E's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Me the, too, yeah. Those yeah. Mustangs have taken off they have, yeah. for Ford. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's amazing what happens when you slash the price. You know, all yeah. of a sudden, people <laughs> People say, are very price oh, sensitive. Okay, now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, part of, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're in an environment where interest rates are high, you yeah, know, so if you, yeah. most people, most people find, don't buy their cars with cash, they finance them and, or, or lease them. And, you know, when you've got high interest rates, that means you're going to have a high monthly payment and, you know, it's, it's beyond the means of most people to are buy you, most new cars. Are you one of those people who I think are right, but I don't listen to who say never buy a new car? Um, No. <laughs> um, I, but well, we, I mean, we, financially we, we, speaking, you yes, should buy we, the car after its massive depreciation in the first yes, year. Yeah, get so, a used car that's I, I mean, I, relatively I've, new. I've often, I've often given that advice, uh, but I rarely listen to my own yeah, advice, no, uh, like especially when it comes to financial things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So you know, you, you, you know, um, we. You know, we usually buy uh, new cars. I mean, we don't buy that many cars, you know, but we tend to keep our cars for 
eight to 10 years. Mm-hmm. That's okay. So the, depre- that. the depreciation is not really an issue right. for us. Right. Uh, but, you know, I like, you know, from every few years, you know, get a, get something new, um, you know, something with a warranty on it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, for the most part, it's, it's worked out fine for yeah, us. Yeah, reliability is probably more important to me than yeah. uh, economy. Although I hear you can get this car uh, for very cheap right now. And uh, look at that, 30 miles per gallon of gasoline. For the teardrop car? Not, so can you switch? Showing it. There you go. Oh, yeah. Good deal on this car. It's a uh, slightly used... <laughs> But that, by the way, it might 30 look miles a little per more g- crumpled now than yeah, it's yeah. a little in that photo. But thirty miles per gallon is in what was this nineteen thirty? That's actually impressive, yeah. right? Yeah, it was very impressive, and it was all because of the aerodynamic design, and also because he's pedaling it. It's not <laughs> it actually like, gas yeah. power. It, 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 like. is, it is a it is a human gas hybrid, so there is that. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sam. Have thank a wonderful so week. We'll see you. My soon. My pleasure, guys. Take care. have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, I love that Dymaxian car. I I. I just, the, the thought of showing up with that at some place, like, <laughs> hop in, everybody, we're going for a ride. It's so fun to me. I just, it's, it's so fun. You know, it's, it reminds me of uh, this show we were talking about before the show, the new Fallout series yeah, on Amazon yeah, Prime. Exactly. That's a real, yeah. Which was a, is a combination, it's kind of a quirky combination of. Uh, I call it retrofuturism. Re- that's a good word for it. That's exactly what it, it is. It, it, the past, and, and that's what this is, retro. It's like 60s futurism. diners mixed with yeah. futuristic technology. Yeah. I like how this looks. Me too. It's, it's pretty cool. It's fun. Yeah, he looks happy driving it too. Yeah. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. Hope you enjoyed this little snippet from Ask the Tech Guys. Of course, you can get the full show for free. Subscribe in your favorite podcast client uh, or visit our website, twit.tv slash ATG. You'll also find links right below this window right here.